yeah yeah okay sir good mm -hmm. okay. okay okay so shall we start yes sir yes sir yeah uh -huh. yeah so uh -huh. again very good morning everybody uh, so now this will be our first uh, keynote lecture of the short term training program and the keynote will be addressed by dimple kumar chali sujar and uh, we all have been now very well known about him so we'll start this lecture uh, before he start his lecture uh, let me request all the participants that uh, please do not put on your mic when he will deliver his lecture uh, uh, so all are requested to please uh, mute their mic when uh, the keynote address will be started by dimple kumar sir and secondly i would like to tell all the participants that uh, because it is a keynote lecture uh, as a protocol uh, we are not supposed to ask any question uh, maybe in between or after but definitely if you want to seek any information or if you want to uh, have some additional knowledge then you can definitely discuss with him but uh, as a protocol we don't ask any questions uh, after or uh, during the keynote lecture so i request all the participants uh, not to disturb in between uh, his lecture and uh, i am very much thankful to dimple kumar sir for accepting our invitation for delivering this keynote address and i am very much sure that all the participants uh, will be benefited by his talk so now i request uh, dimple kumar sir to start his lecture thank you sir thank you dr pradhan uh, you know when we start the program at that time it was sunday yes. here but now oh, i am yeah. with you guys now it is monday <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> that's good for us we are on the same page now <laughs> okay okay <laughs> okay guys so thank again thanks for the invite and uh, today i'm going to talk about the fractional stochastic integral differential system driven by the rosenblatt process with the poisson jumps first of all why i'm motivated to give to deliver this talk why not some other topic why this topic because i worked on this topic just before couple of months before three months and then after i submitted this article to one of the one of the peer reviewed journals very extremely good journal and uh, we sought in the field of fractional system fractional analysis he raised the question and he said that um that fra uh, fractional brownian motion can be approximated by the wiener process but there is no guarantee that process or the distribution that is approximated by wiener process and uh, i just got upset and then i just went to the complete proof and everything i resubmitted my article and happy to say you that it is finally accepted yeah so there was a big uh, dispute i would say uh, the big sort sides that uh, there is this distance. and uh, i am glad to uh, to explain the same thing to you guys so i am going to talk constantly probably for next 75 minutes 70 to 75 minutes and uh, let me start now so the fractional stochastic so first of all i am going to give you the introduction of the problem in which all the terminology is what we mean by the fractional stochastic problem what is the integral differential system what is rosenblatt process simultaneously fractional brownian motion with poisson jumps what we mean by the optimal control all these things first of all i would like to let you know this know this because i'm pretty sure that all of you are coming from different fields of mathematics and that's why those who don't know about this thing that's uh, for those guys i just would like to highlight few of the things based on the title and this way i would like to justify the title too so let me start with this one so first of all i will give you the introduction and then after usually you know the uh, preliminaries that is just for sorry preliminaries that is uh, just for the things which we are going to use for your main theorem but here in the preliminaries i am going to take this problem how the rosenblatt process can be approximated by the wiener process i mean to say wiener eto integrals and then after i am going to provide you the existence and uniqueness of the problem existence and uniqueness of the problem after the existence and uniqueness we will go for the optimal control and uh, subsequently we will go for the applications and we'll conclude the talk so let's start slowly first of all let me explain to you what we mean by the title so fractional differential equation is about to generalization of the integer order and derivative to arbitrary order the potential applications of the fractional differential equation are in many fields of science and engineering just like fluid flow electrical network control theory in which i am working since a long time 
And it is well known that uh, many real world problems in science and engineering are modeled as a stochastic differential equations. You can find some literature on this one since the last number of years people are working in this field. Since the fractional stochastic differential equations, or you can say inclusions, describe a physical dynamical system more accurately, it seems necessary to discuss a qualitative properties for such type of systems or inclusions. Whenever I talk inclusion, that means it is to be understood that we are talking about the multidimensional system. Okay, now let me talk a little bit about the poison jump. So various real life situations can be modeled using the poison jumps. For example, if the system jumps from the normal state to another state, the strength of the system is random. And if in order to make more realistic model, a jump term is included in any dynamical system. The study of the stochastic differential equation driven by the poison jumps has attained the considerable attention since last few years and people are working, some references are here, they are working in that field and they have done all these things, but they have not worked in the field of, I would say, using the Rosenblatt process. They have just taken the poison jumps with some Brownian motion like this. This guy, they have extended some work, then after subsequent extend, extension is given by some other guys, these references are given over here. Little bit about the fractional Brownian motion. The fractional Brownian motion are utilized largely due to its self-similarity, stationary of the increments and long range dependence. And for more, more details, some references are there, but mainly I would say that thanks to Tudor for the fantastic contribution. Tudor, he uh, wrote a number of papers and here I mentioned a couple of papers and the book, two books he wrote it down. So I mentioned those two, two books. In one of his paper, he investigated the Rosenblatt process, which is a self-similar process with a stationary increment and it appears as a limit of the long range dependent stationary series in the non-central limit theorem. And subsequently, Tudor and uh, his co-author, they have established some new properties for the Rosenblatt distribution. Then after recently, just before a couple of years, Sen and Rand, they obtained a set of conditions for the existence of the solution of the neutral stochastic partial differential equation with the Rosenblatt process in Hilbert space setting. Neutral, I mean to say that if you have some delay part on your one side of the system, you have the delay part on the other side of the system too. It could be any kind of delay. It could be finite delay. It could be infinite delay. We are going to talk about this delay time, delay term at the end of the lecture. But right now, neutral means it neutralizes the system from both the sides, from the left side and the right, and the right side. And the same with the inclusions too. For more uh, detail about the Rosenblatt process, one can refer the article 15 to 70, again, the two door because this Tudor, I mentioned the Tudor's article over here. You can Google it and you can find lots of articles based on Tudor because he has given the loss of contribution in the, uh, I mean, say, with respect to Rosenblatt process. And very recently, this guy, he's investigated differential equations with infinite delay, but without the poison jump. So frequently, now let me talk a little bit about the contra optimal control. So optimal control is largely applied to biomedicine, namely to model the cancer chemotherapy, and recently applied to epidemiological models and the medicine. The main goal of optimal control is to find in open loop control, the optimal values of the control variables for the dynamical system, which maximize or minimize a given performance index. And if the fractional differential equation, which we are talking about, the fractional differential equation describes the performance index and the system dynamics, then the optimal control problem can be referred as the fractional optimal control problem. Fractional optimal control problem. <clears throat> Next is using the fractional variational principle in the Lagrange multiplier technique. R.P. Agrawal, he is over here in Texas. So he discussed the general formulation and solution scheme for the riemann liouville fractional optimal control problems. And it is remarkable that the fixed point technique, which is used to establish the existence results for the abstract fractional differential equation could be extended to address the fractional optimal problems too. Uh, recently, these guys, Aisha Harat, and their co-authors, they studied the optimal control of the impulsive fractional system with Clark sub-differentials. And using Lira-Souder fixed point theorem, this guy, 
studied the solubility of the optimal control for the impulsive fractional stochastic integral differential equations. And uh, finally, just last year, this guy has investigated the solvability of the optimal control for the fractional stochastic differential equation driven by the poison jumps in the Hilbert space via analytical resolvent operator and the Barnard contractor principle. So motivated by all this work, affirmation research work in this paper, I mean, in this work, we derive the sufficient condition for the existence of the solution of the following class of optimal control for fractional stochastic integral differential system driven by the Rosenblatt process with poison jump. And the fractional stochastic problem, um, optimal control problem using Rosenblatt process is newly developed concept and is not available in the literature as far as comes of our knowledge. So let me just go through the system components. You can see over here the system. You can see here this C represents the Kapura derivative. So this C, D, T, alpha, alpha is a fractional order, lies between zero and one. So any fraction, it could be one point of one by two, one by three, one by four, two by three, it could be anything, lying between zero and one. So C, D, T, alpha is the Kaputo uh, fractional derivative of order alpha. X, that is the state space. X is a variable in the state space X, and capital X is my Banach space. So X, T is X value, stochastic process, uh, x value stochastic process, this bt ut, this ut is a control, this one is my control. Control function ut takes the values from the separable reflexive Hilbert space capital U, capital U. A is the infinitesimal generator which generates the resolvent operator, you can say the semi-group. So A is the infinitesimal generator and A comes from, A is a mapping from the domain of A which is contained in a Banach space X to X, that is the infinitesimal generator and that generates the resolvent operator. You must be uh, surprised that why we require the resolvent operator because this type of system, you cannot get the strong solution. What I mean by strong solution, weak solution like this, at the, for that you need to rely on the book of Pazi, uh, semi-group and its applications. Fantastic book, very well-known book for the control theorist. And uh, that was written in long back in 1983 but everyone knows about it. So please try to refer that book, namely chapter number four, you will find the weak solution and everything, strong solution, weak solution, all the definitions you will find in that book. So you cannot get the strong solution for this system and that's why you have to go for some weak solution. That means once you have solution, you cannot, cannot go back to the system. That's what we mean in a very layman sense, a weak solution. And that's why we require some support to get the weak solution and that support that means that is generated by this A. And that's why I told you that A is the infinitesimal generator of a resolvent operator and that resolvent operator provides you a weak solution of this fractional order system. Just to explain to you this problem, that's why I have not considered any delay portion, but if you have some delay in that case, you can take some X and here suffix T that is called time delay. If you have some suppose rho T S, something like that, that is called state delay. So there are two delay problems. One is time delay, another is state delay. One can extend the same problem, whatever I'm explaining to you and those who are intended to work in, uh, in control theory, in the stochastic process, they can consider this problem. Right now I'm telling you this thing, this is just the problem right now, no one has worked in that direction. So those who are interested, they can start with this one after completion of this talk. You can find this talk in the YouTube channel, my YouTube channel, or you can ask the organizers. They can provide the full lecture probably. I don't know, just contact them. And again, you go through all these things thoroughly, step by step. If you have some, some doubt, you can ask me, send the email to me. I will provide you my email. Already I provided you my institution email. I'm going to provide you my Gmail email too after, uh, once we are done over here. So don't worry about this thing, but this is the problem. So you can take here time delay. You can take over here state delay, whatever you want, both the sides and then you can extend the same problem. How to take care of the delay part, we will discuss later on at the end of the lecture. <coughs> okay, then after my nonlinear function f, that is from my t lies in zero to tau. So zero to tau to capital X to X, that is my f. My sigma, look at over here guys, sigma s that comes from the interval zero to tau, to capital X, my Banach space, the ZH that represents the Rosenblatt process. The ZH that is the Rosenblatt process. You must be wondering that I have taken over here sigma from zero to tau to X to L to zero Q to the power half Y and X. Why this space? Just wait, just wait. I will let you know this thing. Please give me some time. After five minutes, you will come to know that how I have, 
I, why I have taken this space just for the space setting. And my age that is from the zero to tau to x to x cross u to x a nonlinear. My x zero is the filtration. This is my filtration. We will talk about the filtration too. So see, uh, script f zero measurable x value stochastic process independent. This this is a real, uh, This one is independent of your Rosenblatt process C H. Please keep in mind this thing with the finite second moment. Let's continue with the space setting. <coughs> Excuse me. Let rho script F and P be a complete probability space furnished with the complete family of the right continuous increasing sub sigma sub algebra or sub sigma algebra, you can say script FT, which we have used previously. T belongs to tau, zero to tau, this interval. And this script T, this filtration that is in my F. So please keep in mind this thing. And this sigma denotes the sigma field generated by this one. This filtration that is generated by my Rosenblatt process for all S is lying between zero to tau in the interval. P is a null set. ZHT is a Rosenblatt process with the, this H is a Hurst parameter. And this Hurst parameter lying between open interval, of course, half to one. On a real separable Hilbert space, why the collection of all strongly measurable square integrable x value random variable is denoted by l2 omega script f and x i would like to denote by just l2 omega x which is a banach space equipped with this norm you know this thing why i said banach space equipped with this norm because you can go for any quasi sequence from the space and you will get easily the convergence of that quasi sequence in the same space that's why this norm linear space will be converted to banach space you know this thing so just function analysis, your MSc level function analysis. So let me again continue with my LYX that denotes the space of bounded linear operators from Y into X. And if I write Y X equal to Y, simply I would like to denote by L of Y. Q belongs to Y, represent a non-negative self-adjoint operator. This Q is a self-adjoint operator lying in Y or from Y. And we introduce the subspace of this one, this y0, in the form of q to the power half y in y, which is endowed with the inner product, this one. Because of this reason, you can see over here, that's why this L20, that's why I use that L20 in my space setting with the sigma. Inner product uv in y0, that is equal to q to the power half u, q to the power half v, because that is defined in this form, in the space y, is a Hilbert space and let L20 that is equal to L2Y0X be a space of all Hilbert scavenge process or operators from Y0 into X. The subspace Y0 of Y to X. Phi is a function in L20 is called the Q Hilbert scavenge operator with this norm. And that is finite always. You know this thing that is very standard. And the space L20 equipped with the inner product phi and psi in L20 that is summation of phi en and psi en that is a separable Hilbert space. If phi equal to psi, then norm of phi square that is equal to norm of phi q to the power half square and there is a trace of this phi q and q star. Space of all continuous functions from the interval to L2 space that is given by this one and that satisfies the estimation of norm of xt square is finite. Let x to be a closed subspace of my continuous function, the same space consisting of measurable sigma t adaptive x valued process and x lying in this one equipped with this norm. So supremum of estimation of this one because we are working with the probability space and that's why we have to have this estimation. Suppose qt, t belongs to the interval is the poison point process taking its values in the measurable space u b u with a sigma finite intensity measure v d u. The compensation, you can see over the Martingale measure, that is the Martingale measure and the poison counting, the difference of this one, the compens compensating Martingale measure and the poison counting measure that is defined by n tilde, and that n tilde was there in my system to over here, this n tilde. So now I have defined every, everything, my system components completely, and now let me proceed further with some other assumptions. What we mean by sigma t, my filtration sigma t. 
So let us assume that the filter, uh, filtration sigma t that is equal to sigma and this space for t belongs to this one. And produced by this q0 point uh, poison point process, n is augmented, where n is the class of p null set. This n is the class of p null set. p2 from the interval cross u control space to x with the space of all predictable mapping h from here interval to the uh, cross control space to x that is for the multi-integral multi estimation of norm of h square dt v du is finite. As I told you that we are looking for the optimal control of this problem, op optimality of this problem and that's why we have to have some cost function and that cost function I would like to define like this j x u this x is the state space or you can say x represents the mild solution corresponding to your control u. So that's why I wrote it down j x u and that is equal to estimation e integration 0 to tau l t x u and u t d t. Define the admissible set u a d the set of all v or vt from 0 to tau cross omega to u such that v is sigma t adapted stochastic process and estimation of integration of norm of v is finite and very natural that whatever we have defined over here this qad that is non-zero it's not a null space and qad is contained in lp space where one is less than p is less than infinity you know this thing is bounded closed and convex so uad is bounded closed and convex and denoted by the set of admissible state control pairs x u in script ad where x is the mild solution of the system one as i explained to you you cannot get a strong solution just the mild solution using your resolvent operator or semi-group or cosine operator what it may be depending on the context of the problem so this x is the mild solution of the system one corresponding to the control u in uad the main objective of this work is to find x0 u0 in a AD. You must be wondering that I was talking about X and U and why immediately I took X0 and U0 because I am looking for, you know, the optimal control. I'm just trying to, this is my optimal pair, X and U, my cost functional. And I just would like to take the sequence of these functions and I would like to show that this sequence is converges, means X, X to the power M, suppose one sequence of state space converges to X0 and another sequence of control functions U to the power M converges to U0 in the same space and that's why i wrote it down over here the main objective of this work is to find the pair this pair in a a d such that this cost functional that is just definition that is in free form of j x u where x u again that is from a d and that is equal to epsilon means arbitrary small very small so that we are going to see on the almost the second last part of this talk so what we are going to see what is the contribution to the best of my knowledge or our knowledge, up to now, no work has been reported to derive the optimal controllability for a fractional stochastic integral differential system or inclusions driven by the Rosenblatt process with a poison jump. The main objective of this work in the next article, that is the Brownian process is approximated by the Wiener process that is given in almost all the books. What is about the Rosenblatt process? Question, is Rosenblatt process also approximated by the Wiener process? In my opinion, yes, and I will provide the proof, the concrete proof, and probably you guys will be satisfied and you will be agree with me that yes, Rosenblatt process can also be approximated by the Wiener process and based on that work, we will proceed further. Fractional stochastic integral differential system driven by the Rosenblatt process with the poison jumps is formulated in this work and the fractional calculus theory is effectively used to derive the existence and the uniqueness of the mild solution a set of sufficient condition is constructed by using the fixed point theorem. We are going to use over here the Balder's fixed point theorem. You will come to know this thing later on. And finally, the existence of the fractional optimal control for the stochastic system is discussed and example is provided, will be provided to illustrate the theoretical portion. So let me start with my major part, second part, my preliminary, or you can say the proof for this one or the relationship between the Brownian motion, Rosenblatt process, and the Wiener process. So I would like to jump to my, the second, my second article that is a preliminaries now. 
In preliminaries, let me start first with the winner ETO process, or I would say winner ETO stochastic integral, because without understanding this process, you cannot proceed further, because ultimately, my uh, fractional Brownian motion as well as the Rosen Rosenblatt process, both are dependent on this one, both are approximated, I would say, by the winner ETO process. Only difference is fractional Brownian motion is approximated by winner ETO process just for m equal to 1 means 1 integral, but Rosenblatt process, there is more advanced process that is approximated by the winner process for m equal to 2. So Rosenblatt process can be represented in terms of the winner ETO integrals. That's what we are going to see over here. So we shall start like this. I'm sorry, guys, I just write down over here, BTT belongs to R1 set, but you can write B1T because only I use the same symbol in my system, this B and whatever I mentioned in my system component, that they are different. So please keep in mind this thing. This BT represents just the Brownian motion. So let BTT belongs to R, or you can say B1T, as I told you, is a standard Brownian motion with B0 equal to 0. A winner ETO stochastic integral of order M is an integral of the form IMF, integration RM to dash, f x1 to xm, b b x1, b b x2, d b xm. Please look at here, this is my equation 3. So whenever now onwards, if I say equation 3, it should be, uh, it should come to your mind that we are talking about this equation. I m f equal to integration r m to dash. I will explain you what we mean by this dash and all these things, where this f is nothing but the non-random kernel and this d b x or I, dbx1 x2 up to x1, let me write by dbx. So dbx can be interpreted as a Gaussian noise with mean zero and a variance dx. So expected value of this dbx1 and dbx2, if I take just first two, dbx1 and dbx2 is equal to zero if x1 is not equal to x2. Please keep in mind this thing. If x1 is not equal to x2, dbx1 is equal to uh, dbx1 and dbx2 expected value that is zero. And expected value of dbx square is equal to dx. The prime here, Look at here, the prime indicates that one does not integrate over the diagonals because all ultimately they are the matrices. So you cannot integrate the older diagonals. And that is, one always supposes that x1 is not equal to x2 is not equal to xm. All my functions are different. In that case, this ensures that my expected value of dbx1, dbx2, dbxm, they are zero. And thus, IMF has a mean zero. This IMF has a mean zero. So that should be the first condition for the winner ETO process that your IMF, your integral must be, as um, it has a mean zero. Also, I can write my IMF as distribution of IMF symmetric. This FSYM represents the symmetrized version of my operator F. And this D stands for the, that means the equality in the distribution. It, it could be anything, it could be Martingal, it could be joint distribution, any kind of distribution that D stands for the distribution over here, depending again on the constant of the problem, in which problem we are working with. So what integral three I had, I'm sorry, integral three I had, I would like to represent this integral three. Integral three is defined for all F, norm of F, for all F in L to RM, that is equal to integration of RM, norm of fx1 to xm and dx1 dx2 dxm and that is finite. So this integral that is represented in the same way like this with this norm. To define the integral precisely one first defines this integral, this integral precisely one first defines it's for simple functions and then after one can take the limit in L to RM. You know how to take the limit in L to RM by ensuring that isometry estimation of em f square that is equal to m factorial norm of f square in L2, R2. If you take m equal to 2, in that case, distribution I2 of f determines by its cumulants. And if f is symmetric, we can have this estimation. Long proof is there. I just took this one from 20, uh, reference 27, that is TQ. TQ has proved this thing. T A Q Q U. TQ. I have represented, I, I have mentioned these papers in my reference. We will, I will let you know this thing. But the reference is TechQ. So he has, uh, he has proved this, this one. And that's why I just took this one from this paper. For more information about this one, you can prefer this one. Yeah. It is also possible that you can write DC. Whatever equation three I had, I can write the another form of equation three using the Perceval's formula. That is IMF equal to distribution integration RM double dash. It's not just one desk. Look at here, guys. Now we are in a different format. F tilde 
lambda 1 to lambda n d b tilde lambda 1 d b tilde lambda 2 to d b tilde lambda m where this f tilde lambda 1 to lambda m that is represented in this form and this is nothing but the fourier transform of my original function f what i had in my um, my equation 3 so whatever i presented over here using the percival's identity or percival's formula that that gives us the relationship between the fourier transform of f dash or f dash in terms of the fourier transform of f in l2 rm and this db lambda lambdas db lambda 1 lambda 2 in short i would like to denote by db tilde lambda that is the complex Fourier transform. And because you know this thing that dBx is real, that's why I can write dB lambda, dB tilde lambda, that is equal to dB tilde negative lambda because lambda is real. Or you can say dBx is real. And therefore, in this double prime, you can see here, that means uh, one excludes the integration one exclude the integration you cannot take the integration for lambda one equal to plus or minus lambda two equal to plus or minus lambda three no way you have to exclude that part that's what we mean by by this double prime and later on we are going to use this double prime too and this is made precise this is made more precise again in the book of tech again in the book of tech these two reference that is from tech where the equality in the distribution three and six actually both are same but with different notations is established as well as the relation okay and finally i have mm, sorry guys this thing is bothering me okay so finally i can go for this, this estimation same one d lambda one to d lambda m and that is finite here, this x, whatever axis you have that represents axis in three, equation three, f of x1, x2, xn, or xm. So axis in three, that is a time, and d lambda one, d lambda two, so that is db lambda one, db lambda two, this lambda is in six, there is no frequency. So there's a time and frequency problem. Now, guys, I can give you one more direction if somebody wants to work in the different direction. You know the mathematics is just one tree. And different branches of trees are there. Different branches are there. I don't know whether you know this thing, but 99 branches are there of mathematics. It includes applied mathematics, statistics, all these things. And that's why when you write the research paper at that time, you have to write the classification, 2010 or something like that classification. And some people write 34, 36, 37, different classifications are there. So it's just like one God and different religions, different disciples, something like that. Math is just one. So if somebody says that I'm working in the field of functional analysis or control theory and I, and I don't want to work with the statistics, it's not going to happen, guys. It's not going to happen. Trust me. If you try to increase your knowledge and the time will come, suppose you are working over here. Here is math, your God. And suppose you are in one religion at the time will come that your another branch will coincide with you and you are forced to learn with the another brand, another discipline of the mathematics too again the third discipline and finally you are going towards the top so that's how it works so everything is just same everything is same very honestly i'm telling you when i was uh, in my uh, masters at that time i was afraid of one of the subjects because i didn't do well in that subject i'm not feeling shy to say with you yeah and that's why when I went to my professor, that was my first reaction. I said that if you want me to work with this subject, I don't want to work. I, I don't want to do the PhD with you. Yeah, that was my reaction. And he said, okay, that's fine. We are, we are not concerned about that subject. Just forget it. And I was so happy. I started my research work. After six, seven, eight months, he gave me one paper. I went to that paper. Second paper, third paper. After a year, in third paper, one word was mentioned that it based on this and it defines the abstract topology and i said why you said we are not working with this one and he said just a little bit just a little bit and he gave me one book of Munkres. you know a very well known book i went through a couple chapters of that book chapter three sorry one two and three again after a few months he said i think we, we require a little bit more of that book too and simultaneously after some period of time i went through the whole book 
So it's not like these guys that you like it or not, but the time will come as soon as you develop your maturity, you will come to know that, no, you require all the things, all surrounding things you have to cover. I am working in the field of control theory, functional analysis and real analysis. That doesn't mean that I'm, I'm not concerned about the spatial functions. No, I am concerned with the spatial functions too, because some of sometimes my functions, my polynomials, they are just in the form of the Hermite polynomial, uh, Bessel's polynomial. Yes. So you cannot you cannot avoid all these things. You cannot escape from the situation. Just accept it and try to increase your knowledge. And that's the way to get more and more things in the field. Anyway, guys, I don't want to divert myself. I have a limited time, so let me just continue with my topic. So time and frequency. So what I was uh, I wanted to let you know this thing. After this point, you one can divert to uh, Fourier transform. Yes, because this is time and frequency. You can go for the Fourier transform. It's a two domain time and frequency. One can develop the concept of wavelet transform after this point too. That's another branch of mathematics. I'm not going to talk anything about the wavelet transform. That is re not recently, but I think in 80s, Dabeichi from Princeton University over here. And fortunately, I got the chance to meet that lady, fantastic lady. And uh, we had a nice discussion too. And she developed this new branch of mathematics that is called the wavelet analysis in 1983 to 85, something like that. And uh, I met her in Seoul, South Korea, in ICM conference. And um, yeah, but um, yeah, so one can go for, and that is the advanced version of the uh, Fourier transform. Wavelet transform is the advanced version of Fourier, uh, Fourier transform. So anyway, let me continue with, continue with my work. So my second part is stochastic representation of the fractional Brownian motion. To better understanding this representation for the Rosenblatt process, which includes the double integration. See, I clearly mentioned over here the Rosenblatt process that is for m equal to 2. That means whatever double dash you mentioned in 3 and 6. It is based to describe the first representation with the fractional Brownian motion. If you write m equal to 2 without having a knowledge of m equal to 1, that's not going to work. So let me first try with my fractional Brownian motion means my m equal to 1, m equal to 1 in winner Ito process, winner Ito integral. So if you take m, m equal to 1, this fractional Brownian motion in short FBM, bh t t greater than or equal to 0, is characterized by the following property. Gaussian mean is 0, as we proved, a stationary increment with bh equal to 0, and it is self-similar index h in 0 to 1, such so that and that is for any grade a greater than zero, some constant b h a t and a to the power h b h t have the same finite dimensional distribution. More details you can find in the paper of TACU. These three characterization conditions are very handy because frequently we are going to use this thing. And the check give a given single winner ito integral for m equal to one, means single winner ito for FBM, Brownian motion. And it is sufficient to verify that the three conditions mentioned above are satisfied. Whatever three conditions I, I gave over here, these three conditions are satisfied. This Brownian motion satisfied by the Brownian motion, and self-similarity in the stationary implement uh, uh, increments imply moreover that E B H this B H whenever I, uh, now I say B H that means it is to understand that we are talking about the Brownian motion, fractional Brownian motion, and whenever I have Z Z of T something like that. In that case, we are talking about the Rosenblatt process. So please keep in mind this thing. And that's why I told you in my system component, first line, last part was ZH, ZT. So this is the estimated value of BH square T that is given by sigma square this one, and that is equal to this one. This BHT1 and BHT1, uh, T2, that is equal to this one. If you take sigma square equal to one, in that case, you have YK equal to the difference between BHK1 and BHK. And this yk, the sequence is a Gaussian stationary and the long range dependence for h lying between half and one. My Hirsch parameter remains the same. And the rank of this one, that is because our matrix is the rank is given in this form with the condition that this rank is nothing but infinite. And the increment yk are called the fractional Gaussian noise. Noise factor is really very important. If you're using a uh, uh, I would say that um, aircraft problem or missile problem and uh, moving fighter fighter plane problem, 
in that case lots of noise are there most of the times people are avoiding the noise factor but in the actual process you cannot avoid the noise factor and that's why the noise noise factor is there and once you count the noise factor that means directly you are falling down to this type of system the gaussian noise or probability probability system or you can say stochastic system so please keep in mind this thing stochastic representation of frozen blood process now now the fractional brownian motion is over let me go for the frozen blood process the frozen blood process zt t greater than 0 is if self similar with half is less than h is less than 1 has zero mean and has stationary increments it has therefore the same second order properties of a fractional brownian motion now it is second order properties guys please look at over here whatever i did for bh fractional brownian motion exactly same properties are satisfied over here by the rosenblatt process too same right hand side same right hand side look at here it is however non gaussian this is non gaussian and is expressed the winner it was stochastic integral of order 2 the rosenblatt process can be represented by the time representation fractal representation and finite time interval representation so these three representation are really very important now i am going to come to my original point that how can i say that the rosenblatt process can be approximated by winner eto process or winner process winner eto integral with m equal to 2 because you can see over here it is non gaussian brownian motion was gaussian but here it is non gaussian so that creates the problem and we need to overcome this situation there are different ways let's just try with, uh, sorry my bad let's try with this one the equalities in the previous things uh, that hold in the same in the sense of finite dimensional distribution and that's why whenever we write the controllability problem we don't say exact controllability but we say just complete controllability because this is the finite dimensional distribution in fact the rosenblatt process ztt greater than equal to 0 has an almost your continuous path version with the expected value tz1 minus tz2 square equal to t1 minus t2 to the power 2h and this 2h is strictly greater than 1 i mean to say that h is greater than half and that's why this h is the used just parameter and that's why that lies between half and one open interval half and one it lies between half and one and the kolmogorov's criteria that holds of this one but the the Rosen process is not differentiable, guys. This is very important. This creates a big problem. The Rosenblatt process is non-differentiable in mean square. Even though it is non-differentiable, I say that Rosenblatt process can be approximated by the integration because now we are taking the integration in terms of LP space, right? So that's why, yeah, it's not real integration. Real integration is not possible. This is LP integration, LP space. So because it is not differentiable, Rosenblatt process is not differentiable in mean square, and that's why one has to go to the limit. So limit of the expected value of zt over t square that is equal to limit of t tends to the power 2h minus 2, and that is infinite. And in fact, it is almost surely non-differentiable. The argument is based on the self-similarity and is identical to one of one for fractional Brownian motion. Two dot he explained this thing. And we have seen the Rosenblatt process is self-similar index with same age lying between this one and this one I told you. But it satisfies this condition, just like the Brownian motion, that zk plus 1 minus zk, that is equal to small increment delta zk for k greater than or equal to 0. And the long range, long range dependence that is given by the estimation of this delta z0 and delta zk, that is infinite. But this delta z, uh, this estimation of delta z0 and delta zk can be written in the form of your right hand side, whatever you have written down in the previous section, right hand side of this one. And as k tends to infinity, your h is lying between half and one. And we presented several representations over here of the Rosenblatt process. And by representing, re representations are very physical, we do not provide immediate information about the distribution. And however, since the Rosenblatt process is represented as a double winner integral, winner eto stochastic integral for m equal to 2, one can use the general result given by Masor on the probability density function bounded set of double integration. That means for any constancy, Masor has proved this thing that probability of z1 greater than u is less than or equal to constant c expected value of negative half u sigma i'm sorry i forgot comma over here semicolon or comma there is not multiplication just semicolon u is positive this u is positive 
and the sigma square equal to expected value of z1 square. That means this result is proved in reference 18. And then according to this one, he has proved this thing that probability of y square greater than u, that is equal to probability of norm of y greater than u to the power half. Thanks to Albin, almost the last reference, Albin, he has proved this thing that limit supremum or uh, probability of zt greater than u is greater than or equal to probability of z1 greater than u. And Albin has taken this limit, u tends to infinity of supremum of p, zt greater than u divided by probability of z1 greater than u multiplied by u to the power 1 minus h by h, that is finite. Fantastic result. And that result helps us a lot. And because this u to the power 1 minus h divided by h tends to infinity with u as u increases, and you observe that this one minus this exponent, 1 minus h divided by h decreases from this 1, 1 to 0, as your first parameter h increases from half to 1. So it is inversely proportional, you can say. And hence, uh, the greater, uh, hence the greater h, the greater the similarity index. Similarity of p, probability of supremum of z greater than u, and probability of p, z1 greater than u. So because the, for greater h, we have this very good similarity between these two probabilities, probability functions for large value of u. The Martingal distribution zt has a probability density function, and this follows from a general result of the multiple integral. As remarked previously, the Rosenblatt process now can be viewed as heuristically Heuristically means heuristical parameter h. I'm talking about this h. That's what I mean by the heuristically. Heuristically as the integral of its derivative. So now you can express this one in terms of the integral of its derivative. And however, thanks to Tudor, he said that one can use this point of view to show that the Rosenblatt process can be approximated by the semi-martingal integrals sequence of semi-martingals. So now one thing is sure, the Rosenblatt, Rosenblatt process, Rosenblatt distribution can be approximated as a sequence of semi-martingals. We are not talking about right now the winner process, just the semi-martingals. So now our task, how the semi-martingals are associated with the winner process, and that is easy. So now let me take the sequence of the Rosenblatt process Z epsilon T that is given in this form, proved over here in the reference 31. I took from this 131. And we can express the integration integrals using this one. Then this sequence, this sequence z epsilon t over 0 to actually tau on adapted process and hence z epsilon tau is a semi martingal Since this estimated value of z of this sequence minus zt square tends to 0 as epsilon tends to 0. One obtains the Rosenblatt process can be approximated by sequence of semi martingals because of this estimation. This, this sequence is converges to zt. And because z epsilon t is well defined as the integral of its derivative, as I told you, the semi martingals are in fact the process of bounded variation. Bounded variation means the inner winner eto multi, multiple integrals of order k can be written in the form of a standard Brownian motion using this one, where this one S minus yij plus, I would say x, x plus, there is nothing but my maxima of x zero. And the constant chk, chk, whatever constant I have this one, that constant is a normalizing constant that ensures that estimated of Rosenblatt process square that is equal to one. So this is sequence of this Rosenblatt process is called the Hermite process. It's a kind of, this is a sequence, but these are the functions actually, sequence of functions, and they are in the form of the Hermite polynomial. Just now I told you that you cannot escape. I don't say that I don't know anything about the, or I don't want to work with the special function. Directly or indi indirectly, you are involving into other field of, field of mathematics. So please keep in mind this thing. As you go further, the time will come, you are covering some other fields too. There is no end. There is no end, yeah. You can spend your whole life, but you cannot cover the whole math. It's not possible. I'm sorry. For k equal to 1, the process is given in 9. There is a fractional Brownian motion with huge parameter h. We know this thing. Now, whatever this g h, this g h that is given in the form of g h equal to c h, multiple integral 0 to t and 0 to t at and this one. Tudor has proved this thing. With Please try to pay attention. These W's are nothing but, my W's are nothing but 
the functions collection of all functions wt delizing 0 1 is a winner process h days this max exponent h days is h plus 1 by 2 and my ch that is given in this format is a normalizing constant k to the power h ts is the kernel given by kh ts in this form and this ch whatever ch i have mentioned over here this is c suffix h this c suffix h that is given specifically in this form where beat this one that represents the beta function after this representation you can get look at here guys my rosenblatt my sequence of function that is convergent so kh ts that is equal to zero r h ts that is equal to z h t z h s that is equal to this form my original form i'm comparing this one with my uh, fractional brownian motion too let q belongs to l y be an operator defined by q e n that is equal to lambda and e n for all n from 1 to 3 and so on set of natural numbers with a finite trace trace of q is equal to summation of sigma lambda n right eigenvalues you can say eigenfunctions actually that is less than that is finite and non negative real numbers e n is a complete orthonormal basis in Y such that the infinite infinite dimensional Q Rosenblatt process on Y. And this sequence, Z and T, be a sequence of two-sided non-dimensional Rosenblatt process, mutually depend independent of my whatever space setting, whatever space I define, omega script F and T. And consider Y value stochastic process and GQT given by ZQT equal to this one. And if Q is a non-negative self-adjoint trace class operator, then the above series converges in the space of Y. Once you have a convergence of your sequence of Rosenblatt process, and there is same convergence in the, in the form of Y, that means now directly I can say that my Rosenblatt process is approximated by the Wiener process, or I would say the Rosenblatt process is approximated by the Wiener, Wiener Ito integral with M equal to 2, because we have taken M equal to 2 over here. So that's how that proof works. And uh, now main part or main objective of this article, I mean to say this section is over. I require few of the terminologies over here. As I told you that we are working with the stochastic process and that's why you cannot use the remit theorems, whatever you have in your real analysis book. Royden is, is a very standard book, which I have been referring since a long period of time since my masters. Yeah, so Royden is a very nice book. So if you look at that book, most of, if you are working with a dynamical system at that time, you are using the dominator convergence theorem of Fatus lemma, something like that, just to represent that norm of the integral that is less than or equal to integral of the norm. But here it's a stochastic process. You cannot use that one. And that's why, thanks to this guy, he has proved this one. This estimation of norm of the integral is less than or equal to constant and integral of the norms. Without, without this one, it's extremely difficult for anybody to anyone to prove the existence, uniqueness, controllability, anything. So thanks to this guy. Riemann Laudi Leoville fractional integral operator of order alpha for all functions f lying from zero to one, zero to infinity to r, with the lower limit zero that is defined by this one. This is a Riemann Laudi Leoville function. Just keep in mind this, guys. Those who are working in the field of uh, fractional analysis, fractional calculus, they know this thing. Like uh, HOD of mathematics department, applied science and humanity math, math department. I think in the introduction, I heard that he is working in this field. He's PhD in his field. So probably he will be useful to you guys throughout this session. So probably after this talk, I will not be over here, but you can take the help from him. And of course, I will be there. You can just send the email to me and I will try to help you out too. I will keep my eyes open. Okay, guys, so this is Riemann Liouville fractional order operator. Another is Kaputov fractional derivative. When people are working with a Kaputov fractional derivative, the reason is Kaputov fractional derivative, the constant of Kaputov fractional derivative is always zero. That's not the case for the Riemann Liouville problem. One lady, when last year I went to Bulgaria, Southern Europe, exactly last year in June, I was there. And uh, same days, yeah, almost 29th of June, I was there in Bulgaria. And I got the opportunity to meet that lady. Her name is M. Srivastava Slavkovaska, some, something like that. I forgot the name. She was a student of R.K. Kraval. She came over here to Florida and worked with him for a couple of two, three years. And we had a very good discussion, almost for more than half an hour, almost part an hour, based on this Kaputo fractional derivative and the Riemann-Liouville problem. She says that, yeah, one can work with the Riemann-Liouville problem too, with some conditions too. 
But again, there's a different uh, aspect or different uh, topic and one can give a big talk uh, based on that one. So I don't want to write that portion, but just to assure you that one can work with this one too. This is my carport of fractional derivative. And uh, here, this carport of fractional derivative, if you convert this fractional part to integer part, you will fall, you will be falling down to your original derivative. Just d by dx of uh, x square equal to 2x. So something like that. You can take the same thing over here. So don't think they don't say this carport of fractional derivative is generated just randomly. No, everything that is in sequence that is with respect to your classical calculus too. If f is an abstract function with values in x, then the integral appears in definition one. So whatever integrals I have over here in both the definition, that is an integral in the sense of Bachner. And uh, moreover, carport of fractional derivative that is always zero for the constant. And uh, whatever lambdas I have, that lambdas that is less than or equal to this one that is bounded. This is the contour C, and that contour starts and ends at negative infinity. Let me see the time. I don't want to go beyond the time. Okay, we have lots of time. A closed and linear operator A is said to be a sectorial type. I'm going to use over here, guys, sectorial operator. Those who don't know about the sectorial operator, please try to refer a few of the works. You can Google it. You can find some of the work based on sectorial operator. I have published a couple of papers based on sectorial operator. We are not going to work with the whole space. Just we are going to work with some sector of that operators. And that's why it is called the sectorial operator lying on this one. You get over here. This R is the resolvent operator. Resolvent operator and that is bounded lambda minus a inverse, or you can say one over one uh, one over lambda minus a, and that is bounded by this estimation. For alpha lying between zero and two, the linear closed densely defined operator a belongs to a to the power alpha fractional order. If and only if alpha to the power alpha uh, lambda to the power alpha is in the resolvent of a, for each lambda belongs to this set, and this one is bounded to. So not only just the resolvent of the operator, but lambda alpha plus one R that is also bounded by this one. So you don't have to worry about this one that what will happen to lambda when you, uh, for your calculations. I don't want to start with my original problem. Let me just consider the Cauchy problem over here. This is the Cauchy problem, fractional order problem, simple Cauchy problem, AXT, no control, nothing, just FT. And the mild solution of this Cauchy problem that is given by xt equal to s alpha t plus integration t alpha t minus s fsps, where this s alpha, there is nothing but the mild solution of my Cauchy problem and t alpha is a resolvent. So t alpha, that is called the alpha resolvent family and s alpha is the solution operator for my problem. A. And whatever this t alpha and s alpha, they both are bounded. Just look at over here, both are bounded. After all this uh, background, now I would be able to give you the mild solution of my original system one. And that mild solution is given in this form. And sigma t adapted stochastic process xt lying in the space of continuous function from the interval to L to space is called a mild solution of the system one. If for each control u lying in LP to control space xt, my state space is measurable and the following stochastic integral equation is satisfied. You can see over here, I have used over here my S alpha, T alpha, whatever I uh, represented previously in my Cauchy problem, resolvent set, and here is a mild solution of the problem like this. So that is given in this form. So my function F right hand side was there in my original problem one, and my sigma function was there with my Rosenblatt process, ZH, and my right um, um, H function is there with the null space over here. So this is my mild solution. And now I would like to go for my third article, that is the existence and uniqueness of the problem. Instead of working with the existence and uniqueness of my first problem, it is equivalent to say that now we can work with the existence and uniqueness of this my mild solution is equivalent. And for that, I require some of the uh, assumptions, like my function f satisfies the Lipschitz continuity with Lipschitz constant like this in terms of a growth condition. Sigma is Lipschitz continuous with this growth condition. H is a uh, little weaker, I would say L1 Lipschitz continuous with this growth condition. My operator B 
that is that lies in the space l infinity and norm of b stands the norm for the operator b in the Banach space l infinity and the multi-valued map this one from 0 to tau 2 to the power u restricted on p that has the closed convex and bounded values and is graph measurable where p is the bounded set in u we are going to use these three assumptions over here to show the existence and uniqueness of the problem Whatever my mild solution, please keep in mind this thing, guys, this equation 14. If I say equation 14, that means I'm working with the mild solution. Instead of working with this equation 14, now I would say that I would like to work with this equation that is equivalent, actually, because I just attach one operator with my mild solution. So define the operator G from X2 to X2, such that GXT equal to same thing, see, S alpha T, this, this, exactly same thing, my mild solution. And I want to prove that to show that equation 14 is a mild solution, it is equivalent to show that this operator G has a fixed point in the space X2. The fixed point in the space X2. To show that is a fixed point, the first I would like to show that G of X2 is contained in X2. G of X2 is contained in X2. So boundedness. For boundedness, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take separate forms over here. This is my, my one function, one form. Then this T alpha with B, another form. T alpha with F, another form. This one and this one. I would like to say this one as gamma 1, not gamma function, just representation, some function. Gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma, th gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 3, gamma 4, gamma 5, like this. And then after, see here, gamma 1 is like this. And if you take the norm, use your boundedness of S alpha and this one that is bounded. Use your Cauchy squares inequality over here to here, here to here, gamma 2 is bounded. Then after you can again use the Cauchy squares inequality over here to here, your gamma 3 is bounded. You can use your first assumption of the bound, uh, Lipschitz continuity and the growth condition of F and sigma and H. You can get the estimation over here. So gamma 4 and gamma 5 all are bounded. That means estimation of my Solution operator GXT square that is less than or equal to A plus B norm of X square where growth condition, just growth form where A and B are the positive constants. So that means I can claim that G maps X2 into itself. G maps X2 into itself. Okay. Now, second part is I want to prove that G is a contraction. Contraction means Lipschitz continuity with Lipschitz constant less than one. So I need what two functions. One is GX, one is GY in X2. So X and Y in X2, GX t and gyt again mild solution form take the difference in the uh, norm is there take the integral outside using that theorem and finally you have this estimation just make sure these all are constant and this constant is less than one this constant is less than one and once you have this one that means you can say that g has a unique fixed point in x2 and once you have a unique fixed point that means you can claim that the existence and uniqueness is working over here Another thing is, if I want estimation of x square is bounded, that is extremely easy now because already we went through this one. That estimation of x t square, you can use all your mild solutions over here. And using the Grunewald's inequality, finally, I would say that you obtain the boundedness of x in x2. And that's why we can say that this one is bounded. Estimation of x t square is bounded. Okay, guys, so now I would like to go for the optimal control. The last part, or I would say the second last part of this talk. For optimal control, yeah, it's uh, 124 over here, midnight, of course. That means still we have 20, 25 minutes. So we have enough time. X4. <clears throat> Consider one more assumption. Following conditions are imposed on the integrand. I would like to assume my function L from the interval cross x cross u to r to u with the condition that this L is filter measurable, script ft measurable. This integral or integrand, I would say, is a subsequently lower semi-continuous on x cross u for almost t. This integrand is convex on u for each x in the Banach space x and almost all t in the interval. And there exists a constant. Don't say d is derivative here. Here I just use this d as a constant. If you want, you can take d1, I don't mind. So d is greater than or equal to zero, e greater than zero, nu zero is non-negative, and nu zero belongs to LP, that is from the LP space, function from the LP space. And that satisfies 
that satisfies this inequality. So whatever my integrand, my integrand that is greater than or equal to this estimation. And now I would like to prove my optimal control. Optimal control means initially I told you that we are looking for x0, y0 in the space A, A, D, script A, A, D. So my condition H1 to H4 hold or satisfied. Then Lagrange problem admits at least one optimal pair x0, u0, right? The state control pair x0 is state control. See, I wrote it down state and control because this x comes from the state of state variable or you can say mild solution of the state variable with respect to corresponding control lying in A, A, D such that this cost function, cost functional actually that is equal to estimation of this one and that is less than equal to this one. So they are extremely small. That means you can see the convergence. Last proof. If you write that your LXU that is infinity, nothing to prove. But suppose that is finite. In that case, assumption H4 implies that for epsilon greater than negative infinity, and by definition of infimum, there is a minimizing sequence of feasible pairs X M U N. So I'm going to consider instead of X M U, I'm going to consider over here the sequence of state functions and sequence of control functions xm and um in aad such that l of xm um tends to an epsilon extremely small as m tends to infinity i am going to prove both of these sequences separately first of all let me take care of this my control part so my sequence of control um that is contained in uad you know that u contained in uad so all the sequence of functions um control functions they are contained in uad for m equal to one to three and so on so this sequence is bounded of course that's what we have seen in our preliminary because um is bounded subset of a separable reflexive Banach space in lp and there exists because this is bounded in a separable hilbert space there exists a subsequence I wrote it down subsequence. You can write U M S or U S M, some other symbol. So subsequence is convergent. U M S U M converges to U zero weakly. And you know that thing. If your space is a Hilbert space or complete space, and in complete space, suppose your subsequence is weakly convergent. That means sequence in the space is convergent strongly. You know this thing. So your U M U U M converges to U zero weakly. That means in LP space, that means UAD is closed and convex and Mazur lemma forces. Mazur has proved this thing that U0 belongs to UAD. That means UM converges to U0 in strongly in UAD. Now let me prove the convergence of my state space or mild solution, sequence of mild solution to XM to X0. My XM be a sequence of mild solutions. Just I wrote it down over here. Solution, it should be understood that we are talking about mild solution corresponding to um because each control x1 cor corresponds to control u1 x2 corresponds to control u2 like this that xm t equal to look at over here whenever i require i just use u to the power m x to the power m x to the power m that is my mild solution equation 14 i wrote it down in the form of the sequence and i want another form that is x0 so x0 whenever it is required i'm going to change that one in terms of u to the power 0 x to the power 0 like this over here, u to the power 0, x to the power 0. And now I'm going to take the norm of this xm to x0. If you are going to take the norm of xm to x0, you're going to get this estimation. And finally, because of our main assumption h4, h4 and of course the quasi squares inequality, you know this thing, quasi squares inequality, finally you get this estimation. And after, because look at over here, I started with xm t to x minus x0 t, and I'm getting over here some constant, constant, and here integration of xm minus x0 means it's a Gronwald's inequality those who are working in the field of con func special function i would say uh, control theory and uh, through uh, functional analysis they know this thing what i mean by the Gronwald's inequality Gronwald's inequality that means whatever the function you have on other side other side you have some constant and integral side inside the integral sign you have the same kind of function so always you can use the Gronwald's inequality so by applying Gronwald's inequality i can write this i i Come to this estimation b u m minus b u zero square c x m that is equal to this one but b that is very natural b is strongly continuous b is strongly continuous that means now this one is strongly continuous that means i don't have to prove anything now because i'm almost done that is it oops sorry uh, sorry yes b is strongly continuous look at over here and that's why 
xm t minus x0 t square tends to 0 as m tends to infinity xm t converges to x0 strongly in the space of continuous function and thanks to balden balden says that if you prove this one separately xm converges to x0 your sequence of controls converges to u0 that means you can combine these two in a cost function like this and uh, that is converges to x0 u0 so balden has proved this thing thanks to him and x u that is equal to this one is a sequentially lower semi-continuous in the strong topology l1 and weak topology and lp contained in l1 you know this thing l1 lp means uh, l1 is uh, greater than l2 l3 and so on you know this thing and hence the cost functional x dot uh, j x0 u0 is weakly lower semi-continuous lp and since by the last property we can have this estimation then you can see this thing and finally we complete the proof so that's how we obtain the optimal controllability of this paper and finally now the applications i'm not going to take much of your time just five more minutes consider the following fractional stochastic integral differential equation driven by the rosenblatt process yes this is the rosenblatt process my fractional order alpha is two by three bt ut my control is in this form ATX is in this form, function f is in this form, sigma function is this form, version by process I told you, h function is in this form. Here ht, same thing, with the rest parameter h lying in half and one, omega one that is contained in rq and delta omega one that is a boundary of my region. Suppose this is my region, just try to look at my hand. This is my region. Inside it is omega 1 and outside the boundary. Only if you count the boundary, that is delta omega 1 and that is in C3. Further, let x equal to u in L2. W2 is a standard cyc cylindrical winner process of x defined by the stochastic process, this one, in the same space. When you fix your, I told you, A is the infinitesimal generator of your uh, resolvent operators. And that infinitesimal generator, that is domain of A, you have to be very careful. I have used over here, mostly it comes through the Sobolev space. So, very nice book is there based on Sobolev space, Dr. Kesavan. I think he is in Maxine at Chennai. So, just use that book, you will come to know this thing, how to fix this one. So, domain of A, that is in X2 omega 1, intersects on X10 omega 1. And for Z belongs to domain of A, AZ, my infinitesimal generator that takes this form, admissible control set is in this form and whatever i'm just comparing my components my this system 21 this one with my original system one f sigma all operators they are defined in this form and finally i'm getting because all the component all these assumptions are satisfied all the assumptions are satisfied z8 the rosenblatt process with the parameter this one and uh, sorry yeah here so for alpha equal to 2 by 3, lying between 0 and 1, the problem 21 can be, means my system, example, can be written as an abstract formulation of the system 1 and the cost functional, this one that is given in the form of Lx x u u t that is equal to integration of omega 1 with my state function and integration of omega 1 with my control functions. And it is easy to see that the assumptions h1 to h4 all are satisfied and hence there exists the optimal pair x0 u0 in l0 such that the cost function that is less than equal to this one and i am done so that is the conclusion now in this paper what we did we studied the existence of the solution and the optimal control results of the fractional stochastic integral differential system driven by the rosenblatt process with poison jump in the hilbert space the sufficient condition for the existence of mild solution results are formulated and proved by the virtue of the functional, cal functional calculus solution operator in the stochastic analysis technique. Furthermore, the existence of the optimal control for the, of the proposed problem is presented by using the Balder's theorem. Balder's theorem. Control analysis for the fractional stochastic differential inclusions. Look at over here, the inclusions with distributed delays. Uh, for distributed delays, I published one paper that was in 2016 and uh, two papers are there and in that paper we have used the distributed delays. So here is just one delay u but you can take the distributed delay, u1 u to the distributed delays and you can extend this part in that direction. That is one future one. 
time varying delay as i told you initially that you can write x suffix t like this that is called time varying delay state dependent infinite delay you can write state dependent delay or state dependent infinite delay now at this point of or at this point of time i would like to let you know guys this thing that whenever you are working with time dependent or state dependent delay delay but if it is if it is finite i'm getting some noise if it is some finite delay in that case you can work with the, you you have to define one space and that space is known as the phase space phase space is certain particular space you cannot work the full space full space you have to work with some described specific some small space and that is called the phase space whenever you are working with a delay part in the uh i'm infinite dimensional system please keep in mind this thing if your delay is finite delay in that case you can work with the delay given by delay space or phase space given by hall and kato h a l l n k a t o hall and kato japanese mathematicians but in uh, 2014 something like that i was just reading the materials and i was reading the book of hino murakami and naito they explain this thing in their book that if you are working with the infinite delay at that time this finite this space phase space defined by hole and kato will not work you need to define the another space if you want to look at that another space how i have defined the another space and another phase space and work with the control problem you can refer my work of 2012 that is yeah in jota journal of optimization theory and application 2012 in that paper i have defined the phase space for the infinite dimensional space for infinite delay so you can adopt that technique over here and try to work for the delay space infinity delay space whether it is time delay or state delay whatever it may be don't worry about it but just take that space there is the another aspect of this work so you can publish multiple papers based on this work third one some of your faculties they are working in the field of numerical analysis right you can take the help from them and try to complete this problem try to consider this problem in a numerical way and find the numerical solution make sure that whatever analytical solution i have proved over here that should match with your numerical solution so that's a future expected work so if somebody is interested if somebody wants my help then just send the email to me these are some references please try to go through these references and uh, mainly this luo and taniguchi i used that reference at one of one stage of my presentation i used the reference of this one dihan i told you then after i used uh, tudor so many times 15 tudor this paper i used this tudor and nejima then after i told you that h and nato and uh, tamilanga and these papers mainly i used uh thank you thank you paper of tudor and all been for the probability functions and major so let me stop over here guys this is my youtube link and this is my email my gmail i usually check my gmail at least 2 3 times a day so whenever if you have some question some doubt just send the email to me this is my youtube link you can find probably this lecture in youtube too and if you have some question you can go to your faculty you can come to me i will try my best to help you out guys thank you so much thanks for patience hearing and thanks for the invite i'm really thankful to the organizers too mm. thank you so uh, much well, yeah, yeah thank you so much sir how much ha i close yes. this screen hi yes yes hmm. yeah yeah as per the protocol yes sir yes sir hmm. ha yes sir uh, as per the uh, protocol of keynote lecture uh, we are not permitting any uh, participant to ask the question uh, they can ask the questions with the invited lecture uh, but anyway if any participant is willing to seek any sort of information and you already given your gmail id and you already given the link of your youtube so definitely they will correspond you with your uh, gmail but if any participant would like to give any feedback uh, or any suggestion mm -hmm. they want or any uh, information they want uh, they can definitely uh, the uh, dimple sir yeah any and one uh, or two participant yeah sorry in my yes. youtube 
uh, you can find hmm. some calculus portion to calculus two, calculus hmm. three, full lecture hmm. notes and okay. complete courses. Ah. You can find Fourier transform. Yes, yes. You can find yes, partial differential equation. Yes, correct, ah. Those you can find all these things. Hmm. So if somebody yes, is interested, yes. they can refer the YouTube lectures. Oh, okay. right, sir. Right, sir. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sir, I have received uh, some. Now, now in this world, yeah. everything is open. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, we have received uh, some ah. messages from the participant that hmm. it was a wonderful lecture, lecture. and uh, they are very much happy with your lecture. Thank you so much. Uh, so, I appreciate. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, so, I dear all the participants, uh, I hope hmm. you must have been uh, uh, acquired a lot of knowledge from this lecture. Hmm. And uh, mm. he right said uh, in his inaugural address mm. that uh, that is why all the participants should keep on attending the seminar. Yes, yeah, sir. See, it's a motivation. It's a, it gives you a motivation. Mm. Yes, yeah, sir. And you guess, sir, yeah, I think uh, there will be some here. issue with, uh, yes, sir. Yeah, just send me that I video. There will be some yeah. issue with, uh, yes, sir. So, the, uh, the all part, uh, on the behalf of the Pradhan, sir, I would like to thank you and uh, the lots of uh, participants is uh, giving very nice feedback to your uh, uh, presentation. And uh, so learn many things, asking. not a simple job. He's talking in the area of functional analysis, he's talking in the area of stochastic, he's talking in the area of <laughs> fractional. And he is combining so many areas, and then he is talking in a, such a wonderful manner. So we learn how to deliver the lecture and how to represent our work effectively. So both the things are very very important. So Thank if you. anybody is already in this profession, we'll also get the benefit that uh, uh, in future also you may get all such opportunities to deliver the lectures at so many places. So I think uh, I have also learned so many things from him and uh, I'm also very much uh, delighted and uh, attracted with his lecture. So I think uh, we have started this program in a very wonderful way. Mm -hmm. I'm very much thankful to Professor Dimple mm -hmm. Chali Sajar oh and I so hope much. that uh, we'll continue mm -hmm. the same mm -hmm. in all the further programs. Mm -hmm. uh, so thank you all and uh, Chali Sajar sir. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that, uh, right now it might be uh, late midnight over there. Yeah, almost 2 p.m. Uh, <laughs> oh, 2 a.m. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. So you have taken so much pains. Although we That's are in the morning, morning, we are in the fresh, but now you will have to take mm. some rest. So yes. I I request you now you take rest and uh, yes, yes. Uh, good night to you, sir. And uh, good night, everyone. Uh, good night, all the participants. Yes. Yeah. Good luck yeah. to you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. May so some part. Yes, sir. Yes, please May go ahead. Yeah. Dr. Some participants may respond. They can go. Uh, yeah, please. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So now I request Yogesh sir to give any. Yeah, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. 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 Yogesh sir, if you want to give any further yes, information of our further program, may please uh, continue. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, Jay, uh, sir. Some of the students are asking uh, for your presentation. If it is possible, so uh, you can send uh, your PPT. So I can. Uh, send it uh, this ppt to that participants also and uh, i'm also requesting uh, the participant okay please uh, do not uh, left uh, during this particular lecture session because it's uh, very, uh, it's look very annoying things so uh, we remain present uh, the throughout the lecture and uh, it, it may be the possible due to the internet it uh, you may be the left but uh, please uh, if it is possible to do this thing as less as possible and uh, now uh, we are closing the session and uh, we will uh, start our session at sharp uh, uh, 2.30. Uh, and uh, yeah, this, section, uh, this particular session, uh, is, uh, the lecture is given by uh, Jaya Professor S.L. Chaplot, uh, who was uh, the former head of uh, BARC, Mumbai. And uh, we will see, see you there. Okay? Thank you. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you so much. Thank so you. here we end to the uh, our session. Yeah. 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 Thank bye, you so much. Sir. Good bye, 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 bye. Bye. Yes, bye, 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 sir. Bye, bye, sir. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Sir. With your permission, okay. now we are leaving the meeting. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Mm. okay. Thank you okay. so much. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so yes. much.
now we will start our session from 2 uh, 30 pm so now i am requesting ke uh, participant can leave the meeting